During the terrifying incident involving Travis the Chimp, Sandra Herald, the owner, made a disturbing 911 call to report the attack on her friend Charla. The call captured the horrifying moment when Travis was violently tearing apart Charla's face. The full call will be played later in the video, this is a short audio recording of the real phone call. Staff for 911, where's your emergency? Hi, this is Katie. Two pretty one look. Fox in the road. What's the problem? The Send the police. What's hey. the problem there? The, the chip killed my, my friend. What's the problem with your friend? Oh, please. What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. Send the police. Welcome to Wildlife Whispers, the channel that brings you the most jaw-dropping and unbelievable animal attacks and accidents from around the world. We post videos three to four times a week, explaining these encounters. Today we bring you the horrifying story of Charla Nash, who miraculously survived an attack from an enraged chimpanzee. If you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the post notification bell for more. We appreciate all your support. Now, let's get started. Welcome to the story of Charla Nash. This is Wildlife Whispers. Travis was a male common chimpanzee who gained fame as an animal actor, appearing in various television shows and commercials, including spots for Coca-Cola. He was also featured on television programs such as The Maury Puvik Show and The Man Show. However, there have been disputes about whether Travis was the same chimpanzee that made these appearances. Travis was born on October 21, 1995, to chimpanzees Susie and Coco. Susie and Coco had been imported from Africa to the US in the 1970s. Travis was born at the Missouri Chimpanzee Sanctuary, located near Festus, Missouri, on the compound owned by Mike and Connie Braun Casey. Unfortunately, in a separate incident, Susie was fatally shot following an escape in 2001. After being taken from his mother at just three days old, Travis was purchased by Sandra and Jerome Herald for $50,000 from a breeder. Sandra and Jerome named the chimpanzee, Travis, after Sandra's favorite singer, Travis Tritt. They raised Travis at their home on Rock Rimmon Road in the North Stamford section of Stamford, Connecticut. Travis became a constant companion to the Heralds and would often accompany them to work and on shopping trips in town. The Heralds owned a towing company, and Travis would even pose for photos at the shop and ride with the tow truck, wearing a baseball shirt and buckled seatbelt. As a result, Travis became well known in the town and was even friendly with police officers they encountered during their towing jobs. Travis was raised among humans from an early age, and he was well socialized to human interaction. He had a playful and affectionate relationship with the Heralds and would play and wrestle with them. A neighbor mentioned that Travis knew when to stop playing and always paid close attention to his owner. Travis's abilities and lifestyle were unique for a chimpanzee, as he had learned to perform various tasks typically associated with humans. He could open doors using keys, dress himself, water plants, and even feed hay to his owner's horses. Travis would sit at the table and eat with the rest of the family and would drink wine from a stemmed glass. He had developed a fondness for ice cream and knew the schedules of passing ice cream trucks. Travis could even use a computer to view pictures, watch television using a remote control, and brush his teeth with a water pick. Additionally, he had driven a car on several occasions. After Jerome's death from cancer in 2004 and the loss of their only child in a car accident in the year 2000, Sandra regarded Travis almost as a surrogate son and pampered him. The incident that occurred in October 2003 involving Travis the chimpanzee was a significant event that ultimately led to changes in the laws concerning the keeping of exotic pets in Connecticut. During the incident, Travis was riding in the car with his owners, Sandra and Jerome Herald, when they stopped at a busy intersection. At this point, a pedestrian passing by threw an empty soda bottle at the car, which struck Travis through a partially open window. The sudden impact startled Travis, prompting him to unbuckle his seat belt, open the car door, and chase after the man who had thrown the bottle. Fortunately, the pedestrian managed to escape from Travis's pursuit. When the police arrived at the scene, they attempted to get Travis back into the car. 
However, Travis proved to be quite clever and would let himself out of one door each time they lured him inside, occasionally chasing the officers around the car. This situation resulted in Travis being on the loose for several hours, causing disruptions to traffic and posing potential risks to public safety. As a direct consequence of this incident and the potential dangers it highlighted, lawmakers in Connecticut took action. They passed a new law that prohibited individuals from keeping primates weighing more than 50 pounds as pets. The law also required owners of exotic pets to apply for permits to possess and keep such animals. This legislation aimed to regulate the ownership of potentially dangerous animals and prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. The 2009 attack involving Travis the chimpanzee was a horrifying and tragic event that resulted in severe injuries to Charla Nash, a close friend of Travis's owner, Sandra Herald. On February 16, 2009, at approximately 3.40 p.m., Travis attacked Charla Nash, who was then 55 years old. Travis had left the house with Sandra Herald's car keys, prompting Nash to come and assist in getting the chimpanzee back inside the house. Upon seeing Nash holding a Tickle Me Elmo, one of Travis's favorite toys, he suddenly flew into a rage and launched a vicious attack on her, ripping her apart, limb by limb. Travis was familiar with Nash, as she had also worked at the Herald's towing company. However, at the time of the attack, Nash had a different hairstyle, which may have contributed to Travis's confusion and alarm. Additionally, it is important to note that Travis had been taking medication for Lyme disease, which could have also influenced his behavior. In an attempt to stop Travis from causing further harm, Sandra Herald intervened by hitting him on the head with a shovel and stabbing him in the back with a butcher knife. However, these efforts were not enough to subdue the enraged chimpanzee. After Nash was severely injured, Herald rushed to her car, locked herself inside, and called 911 for emergency assistance. On the 911 call, Travis's distressing screams can be heard in the background as Herald pleads for help. Initially, the police officers receiving the call believed it might be a hoax, until Harold yelled, he's eating her. This desperate call for help revealed the gravity of the situation. Emergency medical services arrived at the scene but waited for police backup before approaching the house. When the officers arrived, Travis headed towards their police car, attempting to open a locked passenger door and even smashing a side view mirror. He then went to the driver's side door and managed to open it. In response to the immediate threat to their safety and that of others, Officer Frank Pieffrey shot Travis four times with his service pistol. Travis retreated back into the house and was eventually found dead next to his cage. The injuries he sustained from the gunshot wounds were fatal. The aftermath of the 2009 attack involving Travis the chimpanzee was marked by devastating consequences for Charla Nash, Travis's owner Sandra Herald, and the chimpanzee himself. Charla Nash, the victim of the attack, suffered horrendous injuries to her face and hands. Within the following 72 hours, she underwent more than seven hours of surgery on her face and hands by four teams of surgeons. Her injuries were extensive, resulting in the loss of nine fingers, her nose, eyes, lips, mid-face bone structure, and significant brain tissue injuries. The injuries left her blind for life and made her a possible candidate for an experimental face transplant surgery. After initial treatment at Stamford Hospital, Nash was transferred to the Cleveland Clinic for further specialized care. Pictures of Nash's face before and after the attack surfaced on the internet, highlighting the severity of the incident and the challenges she faced in her recovery. Her medical bills were described as unfathomable, prompting her family to start a trust fund to raise money for her medical expenses and support her daughter. As for Travis, after the attack, his head was taken for a rabies test, which came back negative. The necropsy revealed that Travis was overweight and had been stabbed. Toxicology reports showed that he had alprazolam, also known as Xanax, in his system. Sandra Herald confirmed that she had given Travis Xanax-laced tea on the day of the attack, which could have contributed to his aggression. Xanax is a potent anti-anxiety drug that can cause disorientation and occasionally paradoxical reactions of aggression and rage in humans. The aftermath of the attack also saw the tragic death of Sandra Herald on May 24, 2010. She died suddenly of a ruptured aortic aneurysm. Her attorney stated that she had suffered a series of heartbreaking losses in the years leading up to her death, including the death of her daughter in a car accident, the death of her husband, the loss of her beloved chimpanzee Travis, and the tragic maiming of Charla Nash. 
these losses took a heavy toll on her heart. On a more hopeful note, Charla Nash underwent transplant surgery on May 28, 2011, performed by a team led by Bodon Pomaha at Brigham and Women's Hospital. She received a donated face and hands in an attempt to improve her quality of life and appearance. The hand transplant was initially successful, but due to complications like pneumonia, her newly transplanted hands had to be removed five days after the surgery. Stand from 911, where's your emergency? Oh, this is Katie. 231 North. Park Primitive Road. What's Send the problem? The police. Send the police. What's hey. the problem there? The chip killed my, my friend. What's the problem with your friend? Oh, please. What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. Send the police up with a gun. With a gun. Hurry you're, you're up. You're off a gun. Wait, hurry up. He's killing my girlfriend. What is the problem? He's killing my friend. Who's killing your friend? My chimpanzee. Oh, your chimpanzee please. is killing your friend. Yes. He, he ripped your part. Hurry up. Hurry up, please. There's someone on the way. Well, God, please, you shoot him. What is the monkey doing? Tell me what the monkey's doing. He, he ripped your face off. He ripped your face off? He tried to he tried, he tried attack me. Please, please, Okay, hurry. I need you to calm down a little bit. They're on the way. Can you put yourself away? I don't want the monkey attacking you. Please, hurry up. Listen to me. Uh, they're on the way, ma'am. They got to shoot him, please. Please, hurry, hurry! You're there with your friend. I need you to help your friend. Can you go help your friend? I can't. He tried to attack me now. Is he still there with your friend? Yes. Okay, so then back off. Then don't get any closer, Please. okay? They're already on the way. Please. If the monkey moves away from your friend, let me know, okay? So we can try I to can't. help your friend. No. no, I can't. She's dead. She's dead. Why Why are you saying that she's dead? She's dead. He ripped her apart. He ripped what apart? Her face? Everything. He ripped her apart? Listen, I think I'm going to say... I can't yes, no, no, just breathe, okay? I'm going to stay okay. with you on the phone until they get there. Listen to me, please, hurry. Please, please, hurry. <laughs> oh, my God. they got to have their guns out. they got to have their guns out. Listen to me. Oh, my God. <sighs> is this your monkey or whose monkey yes. is it? It's your monkey. Oh. It's how, how, do you know how big he is? How, yes, how many 200 pounds? 400 pounds. 400? 200. 200 pounds? Listen to me, please. Where are they? Where are they? And he's a chimp, correct? Yeah. Where, where are they? They're going your way. They're going as fast as they can your way, okay? Please. Please go faster. Please, please, sir. Please, please. Please. Is the monkey still by your friend or can you get close to your friend? He's eating her. No, okay, I need you to calm down for me. I know it's hard, okay? I know it's hard. But they're going as fast as they can your way, okay? Oh they tell them they got to shoot him because I tried stabbing him and he's not in it made him worse. Okay, then. Have them shoot him. They will. Sandra, I already have the fire department close by, okay? So as soon as the police get there, the fire department is going to move in, okay? The fire department can't move in yet, but as soon as the police officers show up... Please tell them. Shoot him because he's going to try to attack me now. Just breathe, Sandra. Shoot him! Shoot him! Sandra, stay in your car. Shoot him! Sandra, I need you to stay in your car. Shoot him, please. I tried stabbing him, and, and he's hurt now, too. So, so he's going to attack anybody. I can't get out of this car. Lock your doors on your car and stay there with me. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. He will rip the doors right Sandra, open. Sandra, just do what I'm please telling you to. Stay in the car. The police officers will handle it. Please tell them to shoot him. Please tell them. Please tell them to kill him, please. They did, Sandra. They're shooting at him already, okay? But he's not dead. I know. They will continue until he's dead, okay? I just need you to stay please on the phone God. with me and breathe. He's not dead. He's not dead. Oh, God. Oh, God. The 2009 attack left a profound impact on the lives of everyone involved and sparked discussions and debates about the dangers of keeping exotic animals as pets and the need for stricter regulations to ensure public safety. 
Let us know your opinions on the story and who do you think is at fault. Sandra for drugging him, or Travis who attacked her. To be pinned in the comment section, let us know the timestamp of the hidden logo in the video. If you found yourself enjoying the video, we kindly ask you to like, subscribe, and hit the post notification bell to stay updated on our channel's latest content. Thank you for watching. Until next time. This is Wildlife Whispers.